My name is Agni Talsanya. I'm a yoga teacher based in Mumbai, originally from the US. I could not be more excited to do this next session with you, which is a very special yoga flow for opening the heart. As you all know, we're all at home together, yet apart, and it's very important to feel connection, not only with others, but with yourself not getting caught up in the anxiety of our minds and the chaos happening all around us in the world. So the next sequence is dedicated to creating space inside you, tapping into that emotional center of softness, vulnerability, and compassion. If you'd like to see more such videos, content, and inspiration, I'm going to tell you to visit my page on Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, it's Yoga with Avni, and on Instagram, it's at the rate Avni dot Talsanya. I look forward to seeing you um, on those pages. And without further ado, let's begin the sequence for today. So I'm going to have you on your mat. Any yoga mat is absolutely fine. If you need to, you can keep some yoga bricks with you. And if you'd like, you can also keep a belt. These are optional props. I'm going to do them without props, the most simplistic way. Let's start at the top of our mat with both our feet together. We're going to bring our palms in Namaskar Mudra. Close your eyes and take a deep Omkar. Inhale. intention for this class to be 100% in the present moment let's tune in to ourselves and tune out of the world as we increase the awareness of our bodily sensations our awareness goes deeper beyond the physical and even more beyond the mental but to the emotional let's connect with our hearts Slowly, you can open your eyes and relax your palms. So the heart is all about the, the spine and we're gonna do a lot of back bending today. So let's warm up that back with some basic backward, forward, and spinal twists. We'll start at the top. We're gonna to raise our palms and reach up to the sky. Open your arms, make a circle with your arms entire arm lovely go back up straight exhale lower your arms down inhaling open your arms exhaling lower them down big juicy circles lovely all right we're lowering onto a forward fold try to reach your hands toward the floor keep your knees straight Relax your head, feel the calm and effect in your mind. Hold your shoulders, slowly turn right and left, sway. Feel the gentle hamstring stretch. As you breathe softly, allow your nervous system to tap into that parasympathetic nervous system, which is known for the calming response. Release both your hands and let's roll back up slowly with our lower mid and finally upper back into a full standing position. Now we're going to breathe forcefully through the nostrils in Kapalbhati style as we bend forward and sweep our arms back. This is a rapid dynamic movement to warm up the spine. Inhale, open, raise your arms, forcefully exhale and bring your arms back. Inhale, rise, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Put some momentum into it and swing your body down, inhaling up. Exhaling down, inhaling up, 
and exhaling down and coming back to rise and release both your hands. Beautiful. Let's come on the knees. Alright. We're going to the next pose. Sit in Madrasan on our ankles and raise both our palms up above the head. Reach our arms forward as we press the stomach to the thighs and come into a gentle child's pose. In this resting pose, you're going to slow down your heart rate and again remind yourself of that childlike innocence and joy that we all have experienced countless times but we forget so often getting caught up in our adult lives. So let's take advantage of this practice to bring about that childlike spirit. Now we're lifting our hips up from the ankles and reaching our arms forward in this puppy pose, Anahata Asana, which means unstruck heart. So this is a really deep heart opener and we're going to keep our shoulders nice and wide by walking forward with our fingers, pressing our forehead down and really feeling that stretch of the arms. You're arching your back by lifting up your hips, tilting your pelvis upwards and it's a really juicy asana to breathe. Our lungs are wide open. Surrendering our egos with our head down, equating with humility and with that, you can sit back down in Balasan. This time open your hips by creasing the space between your knees. Walk yourself forward, Adho Mukvir Asana. This time you're stretching your hip. Just breathe deeply, enjoy this beautiful release that we're giving to the back. Inhale, walk yourself back up. Lovely. We're going to lift up our hips again. Raise both the hands up to the sky. Twist your hands into a T position, looking to the right. Come back to the center, bring your arms in towards the chest, open to the left, twisting back to the center, and relax. Now that we've moved our spine forward and to the side, we're now going to move it backwards. And you can Take our camel pose starting position with your hands by your sides. Bring your hands to your hips. Opening your chest and squeezing your shoulder blades behind you. We're going to engage our core and squeeze the glutes because it's very important that anytime we back bend, we keep our muscles in alignment. We don't want to leave them behind and just bring one portion of, that, of the body into a deep bend. Our whole body is interconnected. So let's engage all the supporting muscles. Then with the help of them, elongate those muscles. So you can lengthen your chest upwards. Start feeling the lengthening in your quadriceps, your hips, your abs, and your shoulders. And then keep squeezing your shoulder blades together. I'm gonna to show two versions, two different levels of this pose. We're going to open up the neck, the upper back, the mid back, and finally the lower back. You can open your neck and drop it to the back. Then release. If you feel supported and you don't feel any pain, you can take your right hand to your ankle and take your left hand to the ankle. And you can keep opening that heart all the way up. Like you can fit the whole entire universe in that gigantic, generous heart, that warrior heart. 
bring your left hand to your hip and slowly coming back in a neutral position, slowly returning your neck to a straight line. That was lovely. You can bring your hips back on your feet and relax in child's pose. Release your forehead to the mat, stretch your arms forward or back, whichever is more comfortable to you. Take a deep breath. That was really courageous and brave. You might have felt some emotions in that last pose because we're really activating our heart chakra and sometimes suppressed feelings are released. Slowly coming up into Hachasana. You can turn yourself so that you're on the long side of your mat horizontally. Come up to your knees. Straighten your right leg to the side. Raise both your arms. Inhale. Slide your right hand down towards the ankle and bring your left arm into an arch. Bring it directly above the ear as you keep sliding your right hand down. Make sure you're not falling forward, but you're staying in one line with the leg and shoulder and arm. This way, we're only targeting our left side called the oblique muscles. And as you breathe out, you can go deeper. Lovely, open up, that's right. Now you can take your right foot in, extend your left foot out. You need to adjust yourself on the mat, feel free to do that. Raise both your arms, inhaling, bring your left hand, just slide down your left leg, open your right arm to the side, and feel that beautiful stretch on the right side. Again, keep that chest open and elbow directly above the ear. Relax your head. Inhaling, coming back up, and exhaling, coming down. Step that left foot back into the center. Turn yourself back around on this mat. We're going to drop our hands down into a tabletop position. Inhale, keeping 90 degrees with your wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Inhaling, opening into a cat position by, sorry, cow position by tilting your pelvis upwards and arching your back. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone and raise your mid back, tucking your chin, pushing your palms in the ground. Inhaling for cow. Beautiful stretch of the spine. One more. And another. Flattening your back into a tabletop position. We're going to lift up our knees and come into a downward dog. Excellent. Now you can try to straighten your back by pushing up your hips even more. Lovely. We're going to take that right foot up into the sky into a three-legged dog and feel that lengthening from the toe to the other toe. Now try to avoid twisting your pelvis out right now. We're just keeping our legs straight and our hip is squared facing the center. Keep supporting your body with your hands. Now you can bend your front knee. That high knee is going to twist to the left side. And now you're allowed to twist out your hip. And as you twist, feel the foot lowering towards the floor. See if you can reach the floor as you simultaneously raise your hand up and support yourself with your left arm and left leg. Jamat got asana, which is wild thing or miracle pose. And our heart loves to be wild and free. So let's be a living miracle by following our hearts without hesitation. Slowly return back to the mat, flipping over into a downward dog, come back to where you started. Let's bring that right leg across your left leg and raise your left leg straight up to the sky. Try to look to your hands 
and support yourself from the side of your body. Come back, downward dog. Rest your knees for a moment and come into Bad Asan. Exhale and relax for one more breath. Remember our, the intention that we set at the beginning of the class was to listen to our heart and be sensitive to ourselves. So if you're feeling like at any point in the class you need to take rest, pay attention to that. Your feelings are important. Honor them. And from here, we're going to lift the hips up and push our elbows into the mat, like so. So I've got my elbows and I'm putting my palms together in a namaskar. Then I'm going to lift my hips and I'm going to push my chest, push my chest into the mat, arching my stomach, arching my back, and feeling that deep, juicy shoulder opening. Feel the pressure from the elbows and really opening up my shoulders. And I feel that space in the chest. You can release your hands and you can walk them inside once again into a tabletop position on all fours. Tuck your feet, do your toes in, in the back and lift up your knees into a downward dog. Let's do the other side by raising our left foot, keeping both the knees straight. Feel that hamstring stretch and the hip opening. Then we can bend our left knee, twist your hip out to the right, slowly lower the foot, raise your left hand, and arch, lift up your chest, keep hopping up, and see if you can arch your back completely. For a wild day, just go for it. Don't be scared of the inversion. I know it feels like you're upside down, but it's much easier than it looks, like most things of the heart. It just takes a little bit of courage to get into. Let's learn from our practice and carry it into the rest of our lives. Back to downward dog. Slowly lower your knees once again, lifting up our hands. What? we're going to do is bring the left knee forward and bring that right knee back. This is called Kapopasana Pigeon Pose. We're going to take our palms and lift them up, open the heart. As you try to push your pelvis down towards the mat, make sure your hips are straight and squared. You should keep this left foot at a 45 degree angle and start to feel that amazing glute stretch. Awesome, I hope you're feeling good. Keep going if you are. So we've raised our hands and we're gonna bow down once again. Bring our forehead to the mat. Excellent. Bring your hands back into the side and lift your chest up. Now we're going to turn ourselves by bending this back leg knee and turning our hips to look forward. Now you can walk your hands through the center. You might not be able to go as wide. That's absolutely fine. You can stay right here as well. Keeping your back straight and in alignment. There's always something for everyone. So don't be shy or feel like you need to quit or feel like yoga is not for you. Yoga is for anyone that has a body. You just have to find the right place and the right pose. So this is our pose and we're gonna show you one way, which is right here, and the second way, which is all the way down. So pick which one suits your body best. Now I'm gonna lift my knees. This is a trick to get to the other side. You can also move to the opposite side in your own way. I like to do this by lifting my knees and turning them out to the other side. Now I'm gonna lengthen my left leg straight to the back and turn my hips forward. My right foot is in perfect position for a pigeon on the right side. And I've got my hands under my shoulders. I'm gonna raise my arms, open my heart. Lovely. If you wanna even go deeper, bring your palms together, take it in a gentle back bend. And then fall forward, bow down. 
using all of the grace and fluidity that you've got tapping into your creative right brain that right brain will allow us to be more in touch with our emotions walk yourself back in you're doing really wonderful we're almost there you're gonna lift up your knees and you're gonna bring your legs together so the final heart opening pose of the day you can lie down on your back bend your knees And you're going to take your hands behind your ears. Now, there's three options here. You can, rather than taking your hands here, you can keep your hands interlocked under your hips. And you can just simply take bridge pose by lifting up your hips, pushing into your feet and glutes. The second option is to take your hands by your ears and come to the top crown of your head and lift up your hips at the same time. This is our supported wheel pose. The third option is to push into your palms and lift your head up as well. Take a deep wheel. If you'd like to challenge yourself by walking in, you can walk your hands in and just feel that beautiful opening. Shoulder, the heart, the hips, your whole body. And finally, Coming down to return to the mat, taking your knees into your chest, hugging your knees, feeling so much love for yourself and everything that you can do, everything that your body makes you feel amazing, massaging your back, rocking to the left and the right. Always make sure to reward yourself for those little and big accomplishments because celebrating something creates a real big landmark in your life, in your heart, and in your mind. It's a note to the future, like, this is amazing what you've done and who you are, and you should keep up, keep it up. And then we're gonna take the knees to the right side, open our hands and look to the left side, twist that spine, inhale, Bring your knees into the center and exhale, turn them to the left, look to the right. Beautiful job. Enjoy the relaxing moment. We're nearing the end and we're slowing down. Bringing your legs back in the center, putting your feet down and creating space between the knees and a sleeping butterfly. Finally open your palms. Close your eyes and collapse your whole body. We've entered that deep abyss of bliss and peace. Shavasana. Nothing but love exists. We're in a cocoon of beauty, magic. And adorable vibrations. We're invincible. Nothing can hurt you. In this magical world that you carry in your heart. Slowly bring your knees together. Raise your right arm and turn to the right side. Coming into a fetal position. Remembering you are a child of this universe. And the universe has got your back. You will always be nourished, always be nurtured. So put your trust and faith into it and give it everything you've got. With a brave heart, full of gratitude, let's push our palms into a seated position, sitting in cross-legged, keeping your eyes closed, joining your hands, and let's say a prayer to Sarve Bhavandu Sukhinaha Sarve Sadhu Niramaya Sarve Padmani Pashyantu 
Thank you.